we do that a lot in architecture school it's all about selling your ideas to a jury and then them kind of ripping it apart <laughs> but you get used to that Hi. So in today's video, we're going to do something a little bit different. I just wanted to take a break from project and professional life and deadlines and stress and kind of go down memory lane and talk about architecture school. I just want to share some of the classes that I took in architecture school here in the US. I did a bachelor's degree in San Francisco um, and it was so much fun. And I just want to share that experience with some of the students that are about to go to architecture school so they can have an idea of what to expect. Because I remember when I was applying to architecture schools back in 2013, I mean, there was literally no video on YouTube that talks about architecture school and I just want to see like wh what is it like can someone just share some of that experience with me and I didn't have like friends or family members who already went to architecture school so this video is for you if you are looking forward to architecture school this is what it's gonna be like of course the classes are not gonna be exactly the same but it's gonna be somewhat similar so let's get started So I just have my screen here on the side, so I'm just gonna read one class at a time. So first, we have Fall 2014. First class was 2D Digital Visual Media. This class was all about software that's 2D, um, AutoCAD, Photoshop, Illustrator, InDesign, um, anything about how to design a house in 2D and how to render it also in 2D. Uh, so it was heavily focused on the Adobe software and AutoCAD. Uh, next class is English for art purposes. So this class was all about public speaking, how you would communicate your ideas and concepts in front of a group of students or a group of teachers. We do that a lot in architecture school. It's all about selling your ideas to a jury and then them kind of ripping it apart, <laughs> but you get used to that. Uh, next class, sketching for communication. This class was basic sketching, like you learn about light, you learn about shadows, you learn about um, how um, the depth of an object, not so much about perspectives, but like there was some of that too. Next, it was figure modeling and ugh, this class was not fun. This was all about sculptures um, and sculpting and I didn't like it because we had to stand for like three or four hours like making things with our hands and it was just really hard i'm not a sculptor and it, we had like animals we had to sculpt on animals we had to have nudes we had to like really like random things that i just felt like it didn't like reflect what i wanted to learn in architecture school but it helps it really does help because it's all about training your eye to see something and like copying it the same exact way it was really hard i didn't enjoy it next we have spring 2015 studio one conceptual design studio the studio was uh the first studio i ever took in architecture school and it was kind of hard because you're not used to designing things as, as a 17 or an 18 year old kid but it was like they start you kind of slow i think we started with a pavilion um and yeah i remember the final was at like a chess pavilion i'm just gonna in insert a photo here so i can see how like my work kind of progressed over time next one we have color and design this class was all about how to match colors what is a cool tone what is a warm tone it was tough because i kind of like consider myself borderline colorblind <laughs> but it's kind of sounds weird as a designer to say but i really don't enjoy color that much um, but yeah, that was that was the color and design class. Next one, we have composition for the artist. Uh, remember how I mentioned the public speaking one and how to explain your um, ideas? This one was in the writing format. Like how would you write an essay about your building, about your design, and how would you explain it in like a blog, for example? The next one, we have design philosophy, aesthetics, and logic. This class was very, very philosophical. It was like... Like for example, I don't know, like they would give you a pen and they were like, okay, so now you're gonna discuss it with a group of students and like have a debate and like discuss the design of it and like discuss the logic and the aesthetics. It was interesting, I enjoyed that class. And that was the end of spring 2015. Right next, we have fall 2015. Uh, first class, Studio 2, Spatial Ordering and Form. Uh, this was my second studio, it was so much fun. It was also like slow, we started with a pavilion or uh, with like a, a cube study and then we had to turn that into a house um, afterward at the end of the semester and I'm gonna insert an image here. Uh, it was so much fun, I got an award for that project. So, and I also really liked the teachers. Uh, next, we have projective drawings and perspective. Yeah, this is the perspective class and this every architect every architecture student has to take this class and it is really tough it's really hard to see like all these lines going and like diverging and like converging and like get into like 
two point perspective, one point perspective, three point perspective, it gets really hard. It's, it's, it was not fun, but we had to do it. Next we have college math. This is like the basic college, the basic math you can, you can take. Um, and you cannot take, for example, the structural class or the physics class if you do not pass this one. That one was pretty easy. All right, spring 2016. We have Studio 3, Side Operations and Tectonic. Oh, this class was crazy, but I loved it so much. Um, this was, um, we had to look at like brain tumor and how it grows and kind of follow that logic to build that the, the building. And it was, I think, um, a fashion lab, something like that. I don't remember the program of the building, but it was something very strange too. But um, it was really fun because like it was all about creativity. You didn't have to think so much about like, circulation and like things that usually an architect would think about so we went wild with that project next we have history of architecture ancient ancient to gothic oh this one so this is the first history class and it started literally with like the monolithic like the oldest thing the oldest thing you can imagine roman architecture um all the way to gothic it was fun uh, college algebra with geometry. Okay, so these class, these math classes like are slowly getting harder <laughs> every semester. This class was kind of, I would say like it was medium. Uh, it was like easy to medium, but then um, it, it was it was okay. Then I took a summer semester because we had so many classes that you almost had to take summer classes to keep up so you can graduate on time. So this one is, it was in the summer of 2016. I took programming and culture. Oh, that class was very interesting. It was all about like studying people and culture and sociology and anthropology and why some cities are like better than others, why some cities fail, uh, why some building complexes fail. It was really, really cool. Then we had pre-calculus. That class was hard. Pre-calculus was really hard class, but yeah, I passed. So then we have fall 2016. Uh, I had site design and mapping site design and mapping yeah so it was all about like um before you start building a building like you look at the site where is your drainage like the parking spaces how would you like trace a map um how would people approach the site uh where a bus stop is where um a, a train uh, station is so it was all about like getting to the site that's why it's called site design and mapping studio four site culture and Studio 4, what is Studio 4? I forgot. Oh yeah, I remember. That was about um, a homeless shelter. So now like you can notice that the um, buildings are getting bigger. Um, so yeah, it was a homeless shelter and we had to go out and interview a homeless person. Uh, I'm gonna insert some pictures uh, and then ask them about like what, what is like to live in a shelter. Um, and of course it's San Francisco. It's homeless everywhere. It's a huge, huge, problem here in the Bay Area um, so it was all about like how can architects um, step in and like take um, take charge of the issue and solve it through housing or through shelters um, and then I had 3d digital modeling this class I remember the 2d visual media this is the 3d version of it so we learned um, Rhino we learned um, Revit had a separate class but what did we learn besides Rhino <coughs> I don't remember but it was like a lot of 3D. Oh yeah, I remember now. So it was Rhino and how like we would um, 3D print things, how we would use CNC machines. It was like a lot of like model making. Um, and then I had applied physics. Uh, physics was tough too. So then we move on to 20, spring 2017. I had materials and methods. This class was probably the most important class in um, all the curriculum, that class and the Revit class, because the material and method is all about buildings, how buildings get built. And I feel like in architecture school, they don't really focus on that that much, which kind of is a bummer because you can be a creative architect, but you also need to know how to build things. So that that class was all about like detailing and um, and how how buildings and materials come together. And then I had Studio 5 assembly buildings. Assembly buildings means like anything that's really big, like an assembly where people would come together. And this project was a project in Miami. It was a theater in Miami. So we had to go to Miami um, with the entire class. And then when we looked at the site and then we saw how we can um, incorporate a site into the project. Then I had a structure class, wood and steel. The structures class were, 
hard. I feel like the physics and the math and the structure is really hard in architecture because I mean people think that we are really good at math which we kind of are but not quite because we are like very used to using our right which one is the creative brain which one shit I don't know creative brain creative brain side I always confuse the two the right brain is more visual and intuitive okay so we are used to using the right brain a lot because we are trying to be creative but you also have to use the left brain where you do in structures and math so and i think that's the beauty of architecture like i i don't see that as a challenge i see that as a, a beauty because it's literally the art and science of buildings so you have to use both and i don't consider myself somebody who's super analytical but at the same time i don't consider myself as somebody who's super creative so architecture is like a match made in heaven for me like this is my sweet spot because i get bored when it's too creative and then i get bored when it's too analytical all right so then i had to take summer classes again summer 2017 i took structures concrete and masonry yeah so this, the first structure was about wood and steel and this one was about concrete and masonry same deal structure nothing exciting uh and then i think that's the only class i took summer 2017 all right then moving on to fall 2017 i took studio six site conditions um oh studio six yeah 350. that was a really fun project i remember we had to design a, a visitor center and it was right by the bay and um it was about like a research and marine biology and things like that and i remember i had like this super narrow building that had um that had this extension to the water and it was it had to be a net zero building meaning it had to produce more energy than it actually consumes so i had to have a very narrow i had to have it very narrow so it doesn't use a lot of energy and it also had to slant the roof so we can put um pv panels on top it was a really fun project uh then i had building information modeling that was the revit class i think in architecture school once especially in the us once you take the revit class i feel like you're already to start an internship because every firm is actually looking for people who know how to use Revit so if you have that skill I feel like anything you do before is not quite relevant or it's not something that you can transfer into the real world but once you have the Revit skill I feel like you're ready to work in an office after Revit I took history an artistic intellectual history I think history too um, that was, I think, a lot about Renaissance and like the Medici family in Italy and, and things like that. Um, I liked my history classes. Moving on to spring 2018, I had Studio 7, Tectonic and Structure. So that studio, like studios like now are getting harder and also more technical. So that studio was all about exiting and egress and how um, the structure and like the core of a building and like where would you put an elevator, where would you put the exiting stairs so it was not so much about the design uh and then i had structure structural class which was systems investigations so yeah the studio and the structure class in this semester kind of went hand in hand uh we had like the structural teacher would come to the studio and then we would have the studio teacher go to the structure class because our studio project was the structure assignment then the third class was climate and energy use it was all about sustainability and i really enjoyed that class I love anything sustainability we had to like study about vernacular architecture we had to look at how the um, indigenous people built their houses we had to look at net zero buildings um, just how to make the building very efficient and then we have summer 2018 i had to take history of architecture modern um so i remember we did like the 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 prehistory until until um gothic and then we did history too which was the renaissance and now we're doing uh, modern architecture um, i enjoyed that it was all about the Bauhaus. it was a frank lloyd wright um miss van der Rohe, le corbusier it was it was pretty cool then i had architectural theory oh my god that class was tough like we had to do a lot of writing i love architecture theory but like the level of writing that we needed to achieve was beyond what i usually write it was and i consider myself as like a pretty good writer like in terms of essay like i am not bad but that class was really really hard so fall 2018 i took building systems mechanical electrical and plumbing oh so yeah this was an mep class so it was all about how to get fresh air into the building how to have exhaust fans 
um, how to get electrical lighting to the building, how would you have a well-lit room. Um, it was about plumbing and pipes and things like that. Very technical, but very important for any architect. And then I had a code class. So like, as you're noticing, it's getting real and real. It's no longer the brain tumor that you can design. This is like things that you will use every day for the rest of your life as an architect. Um, so yeah, code analysis, it was all about code and IBC, CBC, um, egress, um, ADA, ADA, which is the um, Disability um, Act, um, how a people, how a person in a wheelchair can access your building, um, things of that nature. And then I took Studio 8, which is housing and comprehensive design. This studio was really hard, but fun, because it was hard in a sense, like the scale was just like huge. We had like a huge um, city block and we had to design these houses and then we had to design a courtyard and how people would access it and it was closer to public transportation. So there was just a lot to um, think about. And I had to take urban sociology. It was very similar to programming and culture. So we just had like to uh, discuss pretty much urban planning and cities and why they're like homeless in some cities and not in others, um, things like that. Then what else? Okay, spring. 2019 I took professional practice for architects so this one is all about how you start your firm um, how do you read contracts how do you get clients how do you pay your employees if you end up having your own practice really really fun class it's kind of like a business class which I love so I really enjoyed that class and then I had uh, my thesis then I started my thesis so my thesis was a little bit different it was not like the typical um, theory where you have to do research and you have to find sites so we had a design build thesis so which means we already have a client um, and we had a site and we had to draw something and build it it was something very modest and small but it was just the experience of having a, a client already in school was kind of valuable because all the previous studios we didn't have a client so basically the teacher was our client they were the only people that would give us feedback but we had like two um, different theses. We could either do the research one or we could do the design build. And I picked the design build because it was something different. Like I did so much research in the previous studio, like the brain tumor thing, like it just like really, really um, theoretical things. But I just wanted to have something kind of like legit. Um, and yeah, that was my thesis. And then I took small business entrepreneur. I don't remember this one. Ah, uh, I think I kind of remember, but I don't remember. It was uh it was a june intercession yeah so it was an intercession meaning it was before it was after the spring semester and before the summer semester like they really try to condense the class in like two weeks or three weeks so it went by so fast i don't even remember i think i did an idea of um starting my firm so i had like to come up with a logo i had to come up with a business plan yeah now it's coming back yeah so i took small business entrepreneur and it was all about like coming up with a business plan and how uh, you would market the the firm and how you would um, uh, have like a logo a website things like that then i had a film history so like at this point i just had like some um liberal art classes that i had to fill out and i took film history it i, I didn't really enjoy it honestly i like movies but i'm not like a historian where I would like see like the different angles and the black and white movies and things like that it was just whatever then uh, summer 2019 I took participatory design which is kind of an um, extension of my thesis and I took urban design theory um, urban design was really fun I, I, I like cities in general um, it's just like such a complex um, thing and like it's just so big and so massive and it grows so spontaneously that it's fascinating to study uh, then last semester I took again my thesis um, I took senior portfolio which um, it was a class all about how to put your portfolio together it was mostly a graphic design class but it was very very important so we had to put all our projects into one book we had to print the book they helped us set up a website actually the website that I have right now it's something that I started in that class and I just kept adding projects to it um, then I took fabric and fiber technology. I took a fashion class because again, I needed the liberal art classes. So I took the, the fashion class. I thought it was going to be a lot of fun, but what I realized is even if it's fashion or movies or anything like that, it's kind of sounds like, oh, it's easy. You know, it's just like fashion, it's, it's movies. But when you have to do it, like have to, it's just like, it's different. It's, it's not fun anymore. Like you have to have an assignment and like, I had to do like this whole um, 
booklet that had all different types of fibers like this is silk this is cotton like and then you would look inside and like you would see like the mesh of it and like it was just it was a lot of work actually and then i took um popular topics like health nutrition and public um just public safety in general and that one was was fun like why do some communities are like more obese than others why some communities have like better water quality than others and uh, it was an easy class but yeah it was just kind of nice to take these easy classes with the thesis because um i think in like the fourth year or something i started working i started having an internship so i needed to take like i needed to take easier classes because the studios were getting harder number one and the other classes the liberal arts classes i had to have like easier classes so i can compensate plus i was working 20 hours 25 hours a week so i really didn't have time to take any hard classes that were time consuming because it was just not gonna work out i needed to graduate on time and luckily i graduated in december 2019 like right before the pandemic hit and i was able to keep my internship and they hired me um and it was just I got lucky because a lot of the people that waited until they graduated in June 2020 after the pandemic was like we were in the middle of it it was just so much harder to get a job at that point so whoever got in before was lucky enough um, so yeah I got in like December 2019 right before um, and that's pretty much it that, that was my last semester I mean I don't know how many classes that was I'm gonna <laughs> count them again but that was um, 165 units I believe yeah that was that was a lot of units um, yeah so that's what it will take uh for you to become an architect and of course this is not the end if you're familiar with the architectural system in the us you have to go to architecture school it has to be either a bachelor of architecture or a master's of architecture uh, a bachelor of art does not count as a professional degree so you have to have a professional degree then you have to work three thousand hours in internship um, and then you have to start taking your licensure exams, which are, I think, six exams. What is that? PCM, PJM, um, CE, PA, PDD, PPD, six exams. And then you have to take an extra one in California. So that's a total of seven exams. And once you're done with the seven exams, then you can call yourself an architect. But before that, you're just an architectural designer. Just something to be aware of because a lot of people don't know that. So to be able to call yourself an architect, you need to have a professional degree, you need to have 3000 hours of work, and then you have to pass your ARE exams. And congratulations, you're an architect now. So yeah, that sums up pretty much architecture school and my experience. I'm gonna try to have another video where I talk about the ARE exams and like the 3000 hours, which are called the AXP. Um, and uh, so that way you have a holistic idea of the profession. And um, so yeah, let me know if you have any questions in the comments down below. And as always, thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one. Bye.